Hey everyone, Graham from Loudwire here. Today we're with Tobias Forge of Ghost. Thank you so much for being here today, man. Thank we so, you. We so, so appreciate it. And uh, you are our pick for the metal artist of the 2010s. So we <laughs> would love, yeah, there you go. So we would love to uh, talk a little about your decade and sort of the rise of Ghost. Even before then, even you were in bands like Repugnant, uh, Magna Carta, Cartel, Crash Diet. And like some of these bands had like a nice following and you were uh, getting like underground success. But when these bands didn't pan out and you were going on to Ghost, you know, you're like approaching your mid 20s, almost your 30s. Like, what was your hope like when it came to making a, a career and a life from metal music? I mean, it's, it's nowadays looking back on it, it feels so just because I know better now. Not not only do I know what, what, uh, you know how things transpired, of course, but but also knowing a little bit more what it takes to get there, and uh, it's hard not to look back on whatever I thought back then to being slightly naive and kind of off, um, because you know I always felt that I was just around the corner from the big break. And uh, it, it dawned on me later, of course, how far away I was uh, from that. Um, so it's 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 easy to sort of look back on your 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 actions back then as like, oh. <laughs> uh, but you know, in the you know, the, it wasn't like all in, in, in uh, like to no avail. It was definitely worth doing, and there was a lot of. A lot of my determination and a lot of my um, uh, sort of uh, methods were also on the offset of, of having spent a lot of time in bands that weren't, weren't really doing any uh, greater progress. Um, so once uh, opportunities sort of arose, it was, uh, it was um, on one hand easy to sort of like let's do that and that like um but yeah i mean if if you'd asked me when i was 18 i i i probably would have um formulated something along the lines of i wanted you know repugnant to be it ended up being a sort of an underground band yeah and uh now with a slight sort of i guess one one hand sort of cult if I hadn't been known, it would have been a cult band, cult band completely, I guess now, with the time of passing, and and especially it has, Repugnant has one quality that sort of automatically sort of shoots you up in, into cult hell or heaven, if you want, is that we never made it, and and that's that's, you know, one of the prerequisites, of of, of cool bands, um, but then again, I did, so I sort of soiled that. Um, but, uh, you know, back in 1999, I was definitely thinking that, oh yeah, we're going to sign to Roadrunner and become the next Sepultura. Wow. I would have loved to, like, um, gotten to a position that a lot of, uh, death metal bands are in now, you know, I mean, the ones that sort of rose sort of above the, uh, uh, underground, Amon Amarth, or um, Arch Enemy, you know, whatever, sure. like but bands like that, that that sort of perfected their their thing into into uh, a livelihood, and that was definitely what what I I was hoping for. But, Is there still an itch at all to play death metal? Um, me physically, personally, yeah, yes. Uh, but uh, I'm not sure if there is a if if there is a suitable time and place for it. Not only because I'm very busy, but also um, I'm very torn when it comes to that. Because I also know that uh, I know my um, my uh, sort of uh, I know my personality well enough, or I try to be. I, I know at least that bit that it's 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 going to be hard to to do it it needs to be purposely like one show or something it needs to be very very slow as soon as i'm getting a little bit of slack 
and uh, you know um, anything is sort of unwritten all of a sudden I'm just like Whoa! then I want to like do it for real as much as I wanted repugnant at one time to be you know the claim to fame and more my claim to fame and I wanted that to be the band that was gonna mm -hmm. turn into a fully fledged full-time sort of hardcore touring band now it's almost like well uh, I don't know I wanted to be sort of in the the same, you know, I want to, I'd rather be associated with bands that I like worship, you know, Necrophagia and, and Mephisto and Morbid and bands like that that never really got anywhere and just, uh, I think that that's where it belongs. From, for also from a writing point of view, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure if I can make a record like that anymore. You know, you can shoot yourself in the foot in order to sort of make a, you know, a more credible uh, limp. But um, it would be hard not to go in with kind of too good guitars, a little bit too good of a drum kit, and a little bit too pricey studio, and earn, you know, put invest a little bit too much time to make this f great sounding record that will sound nothing like, you know, how yeah. it should be. Remember, I mean, my, my theory is still, and I'm sorry for anyone who feels shat on, but all, all my favorite death metal records are made by 20-year-olds. One exception is Alters of Madness, because they were like 24. Yeah. But the rest of them were all made by young, young, young teenagers still living in, with their moms. And... You can't it's, really it, tap it, into no, that. These you cannot. Days, you, yeah. It's 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 just a it's just a genre that you are at your prime when you're like eighteen, twenty, and um, that doesn't mean that everything beyond that suck. Yeah. But just look at the top twenty of those historic <laughs> records. Like no questions asked. Yeah, it's sure. it's it's dominated by. Unfortunately, only dudes. Unfortunately, but that that just just got their driver's license, basically. Pretty much. So if if setlists.fm is a credible source, it says your first show was October twenty third with Ghost. That is, uh, twenty ten mm. in Würzburg, Germany, at the Hammer of Doom mm. festival. What do you remember about that show? It's hectic. It's very very hectic, and I was sort of. Um, I was sort of TMing that tour as well, which was a little, yeah, don't do that <laughs> uh, if you're also to be on stage. It was very chaotic because the band was so new, not Ghost only, but the band, we didn't know each other uh, as a group. Yeah. And um, we had been rehearsing for like three weeks or something rightfully so everybody was looking at us or me basically like okay so what do we do okay put this shit on and 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 um okay cool go oh the intro uh yeah you can start it now okay oh oh here goes nothing <laughs> and it, but you know it turned out quite cool the first show i don't remember very fondly but uh, definitely the second one our second show was definitely way more in place uh, not only, I mean, we hadn't transformed into a band 100 shows into our career, but it was just, I think that the novelty of the first show also, um, that attitude sort of lent itself a little to the crowd as well. So people were, all ju were just like, <laughs> click, and it, it, it was just a very hard, crowd and I don't think it it, it was uh, and to add on to that uh, no offense whatsoever but it was in Germany and Germans are generally quite they're they're like okay you rock or you suck it's, it's, a, it's it doesn't it's not like playing Argentina where it's just like ah, you're just crazy and screaming and jumping around and uh, so it was very hard it was very it was a hard crowd to sort of figure this new thing out. And it was kind of, you know, the, 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 the basics of, um, of the show was also rather in, unintuitive in a way. 
mm. you know, you put shit on, uh, which is uh, kind of the opposite of what you want to do when you go up on a hot stage. So there were there were breeding issues. There were uh, all kinds of issues, visual issues, like vision issues, and and all kinds of stuff that sort of. So I think sometimes people credit the band for being unanimated in the beginning. Uh, for the wrong reason, they think that it was just it was actually we were mobilized. That was that was the problem. Hmm. So, but it served its purpose because it was supposed to be sort of eerie and, and weird. Uh, yeah, it became eerie and weird, but it, that also had a, an effect on you as a performer. It was kind of strange. Uh, however, when we got to London the day after, um, what really changed was that the crowd was absolutely avid. It was. It was an explosion when we played, and everybody was singing the songs, and it seemed a little bit more like on the first one, we just came to a festival. We were just the odd, novelty, weird thing that was going on at the day. Oh, the clown band, you know, and 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 then the day after, we had like a surge of people from all over the world that came to that festival with the intention of seeing this that had been brewing for. Uh, half a year or something since the MySpace songs came out and the single came out and all that. So it, it was way more like a welcome, whereas the first one was a little bit more like auditioning in front of a <laughs> committee. Yeah. Um, no offense, I'm sorry. It's, it's like, it's just that, that that's definitely how it felt. There was a huge change between Opus and Infestissimum. Mm. Uh, because as a fan, I remember when Opus came out and thinking, wow, this is a really cool like throwback, occult, kind of doomy record. And when you went into Infestissimum, it suddenly became more grand uh, and sort of defied genre as well. Can you tell me about making that transition between albums? I was very adamant about writing new material very quickly after Opus. And I was very, very uh, determined not to make just a continuation of, of that record, Opus. Um, because in 2011, I mean, the, 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 except for superlatives here and there, the three words that it, everyone was talking about, or that you just kept seeing everywhere was, Merciful Fate, Bloister Cult, and Hype. Nothing against those bands whatsoever. I'm a giant Merciful Fate fan. Um, I love Bloister Cult. They are nowhere near as much of an influence as people think they are for me. Uh, especially not back then. I'd say I would probably listen to them more nowadays than I do did back then. Um, and but never ever were they like uh, as much of a big influence as I, I can list so many more things that would be so more m way more obvious where yeah. I can say like that riff is from that that riff is from that that riff is from that that vocal bit is from that it's just that the 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 combination of of ba basically slightly more confrontational rock and uh, sort of AOR vocals that makes everybody mm. think that it's oh. What's your cult? Um, just because a lot of the other sort of occult rock bands usually have just one singer, like uh, all the Troubles and all the Saint Vitus's and all those. It's just yeah. one singer, so you don't have that sort of multi-layered um, uh, vocals. Um, but so that was one bit, and then the, it was the hype bit. I was very determined to um, prove that we were not a hype. We had a hype going, but we, we are not just a, a hype. Uh, I, uh, I've, uh, I, with the risk of sounding awfully high horse, I, I definitely know a lot of bands that were hype uh, that didn't really have records to back it up. Uh, I know one thing, a lot of those records that are made by one band uh, that have one good record and they end up doing a really shitty record that usually crushes like every every hope of, of 
And unfortunately, there are so many examples of that, even to this day, even like after us, there have been many promising debutantes. And then when it's time to write a new record, it's just like, oh, and then it's over. And they even, you know, break up, change bit names. And, and, and it's just, and I was so uh, set on that that is not going to happen to Ghost. Because I believe that that the, the well um, that I've been getting this water from, and this is way deeper, and, and I knew that I had more ideas than that. And I knew that if I could just make a record that was as playful and as playfully written as um, Opus was, um, I think that we can push the boundaries way further than than a lot of the one album hypes. Um, but that's why I also started writing immediately, like just go at it and then just because of touring. Um, touring and, and there was a, a few sort of hiccups or hiccups, but there, there were a few. Um, uh, we changed labels in the middle of that and, right. and uh, we had management coming in and there was like a lot of, we had a ton an absolute shit ton of, of administrational and 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 um, structural um, chores to go through at the same time. So there, therefore, it took until 2013 to get the album out. But Infestissimum was written in 2011. Oh wow! I so, didn't know that. No, by the time that we recorded uh, the the final sort of op- uh, festissimum, mm. it was um, it was one year uh, old, basically. You obviously put a lot of thought into the transitions between records, uh, as with the transition between singers on the records, uh, and you talk a lot about growing pains uh, in some interviews that you do. Mm. Can you tell me about the growing pains associated with? going from Papa to Papa to Papa to Cardinal? Uh, one is the physical aspect. The, 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 f- the vanity aspect of it. Which is, on one hand, a, uh, an asset and a nice thing. Uh, because you don't have to worry too much about your um, your looks, your personal looks, mm-hmm. same way that most art, other artists has to deal with age and <laughs> whatever um, um, problems you might have with your, your own visage. Uh, that was a good thing, but it's also a, a weird thing because you have to get accustomed to uh, seeing a new face every now and then, which is also kind of weird it's 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 kind of I would, I would it's kind of like uh, if, if, if you got a completely different haircut it also takes time to is this really me like sure you know if, if you get a crew cut <laughs> and a diet blonde you would feel strange I guess sure. you know um, and um, no, I think that the biggest problem I have with that, which, which I am very, very um, troubled by, is that uh, with age, I'm, um, I've developed a slight little claustrophobic thing, which I'm, uh, which is not cool. Um, and uh, honestly, uh, I'm, a, I'm a, actually a better singer than the mask and, and the, the getup allows me to be. That is very irritating. Hmm. I didn't notice it in the first couple of years because I was not as I, would, I was not as uh, as uh, um, I didn't have the amount of practice that I have have now. But now, when I am a better singer, it's very annoying, uh, you know, uh, being asked to or put I, I put myself in a position where I'm basically putting a pair of flip flops on to play a soccer game. That's very irritating. Because in every other department, we're trying to, to sort of maximize and get into the arena band that we're, we're, we're uh, that we are now currently, and and uh, it feels very annoying to be uh, limited that way. 
we'll see what that entails in the future. But uh, um, yeah, so if there ever are any changes, that is why. Okay. I believe that we can improve on many departments. Sure. And uh, the period of time from Infestissimum to Meliora, you hit a lot of new high points on Meliora as well. Mm -hmm. uh, songwriting, uh, performance, uh, a new character who is much more kind of flamboyant and charismatic, mm. and also a Grammy. Uh, can you tell me about that change? Towards the end of Infestissimum, I... Uh... When we've gone, you know, in, in, on the first record, it was never really a problem because we were, we were, uh, for the most part, we were supporting. We were doing festival slots, so our thirty minutes worth of material wasn't um, entertaining for for thirty minutes. Was rel relatively easy. It went by pre pretty quick. Infestissimum saw uh, a lot of headlining. And uh, we were still playing rather moderate venues in size, but we were also sort of touching upon bigger uh, settings. And uh, I don't remember the set length at the time, but it can't have been more than an hour and 15 minutes or something like that. Yeah. And I, then I think we played most of the material. Um, I don't know exactly when the thought hit my head, but definitely I know that towards the end of the tour, I was just like, this is not flying. This is not good. This is not... We, we, it's so still standing. It's not entertaining uh, the way that I think it should be entertaining. Sure, there are probably some people in there like, yeah, yeah, this is boring as shit, I love it. You know, but, but we're, we're, we were never supposed to be uh, like slow and suggestive. It was supposed to be entertaining. Uh, so I, I, uh, it just dawned on me like, you know, a priest has many get-ups and uh, there, there's many significant, like, uh, um, what's the word, uh, and identifiable uh, get-ups that, that, uh, that a, a priest or a preacher or, or a bishop can have. So um, the next one needs to have some sort of pant get up because otherwise this, this will die. Mm. Um, and, it, it, you know, again, I'm talking cult. Cult usually means when it's not doing well. Sure. Uh, unfortunately, that doesn't mean that it's bad, but it does mean that it's limited in some way. And um, I felt that that was not the the way that I wanted to take, and I, I knew that, you know, I wanted to make a record that was going to be f***ing a rock. So we needed, um, we needed to dress accordingly in order for the show to start, you know, uh, coming alive. So that's why uh, a lot of, the, we did a big uh, transition into Meliora. There's a lot of uh, theories as to, like, Dave Grohl's part in the band and like it's sort of collaborating with you guys like how deep did that really go um beyond uh, uh the the actual recording he did with us and uh serving as an inspiration not much more than that gotcha and uh yeah i mean of course foo fighters have been very supportive fans and and took us out on the road and uh, so we, but but not more than that. He's not been sort of involved in other records. Gotcha. If that is what people are thinking, I hear a <laughs> lot of different theories. So right, right, right. It's hard to. Let's just leave them guessing then. And Let's uh, leave them guessing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's he's the keyboardist actually. Oh yeah, yeah, and the uh, the lady mask. Yes, but sorry, uh, didn't mean to spoil that. Uh, <laughs> So, what can you tell me about the uh, the transition from Meliora to Prequel? Um, yeah, there was a there were a few uh, drastic things. Um, one was already planned beforehand. Um, 
as per the square hammer video where there's a clear red cardinal uh, coming in quickly. Um, not a, that's not a coincidence. Um, I really wanted Prekel to be a challenge. Um, again, to avoid um, just trampling the same trodden path. Um, because we, um, we had always three records in a row. We had sort of just, okay, so here he is. And then that was a, like a new character already sort of risen to um, utmost uh, promotional status or whatever, where it felt like that's kind of boring. Like, it would be kind of cool to see someone that maybe isn't perfect. Um, I think that you know the 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 idea of imperfectism, <laughs> imperfectory, imperfection um, is also a a concept of of the greater concept of of what we're singing about and, and what we're messaging. So I wanted that to be like a little bit of. Black, yeah, here's a little bit of an underdog that we don't know yet that might or might not be the man for the job. Yeah. And uh, that it was a little al dente. But I like that. I think that that, uh, I think that that did something to the career as well because it, 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 it also, as, as with everything, that with every album that we've done and every cycle, there's been one sort of like thing coming uh, that has been sort of an experiment experiment from, from my end. Like, let's see how far we can push this, Goulet. <laughs> uh, he is. Um, Cardinal. Um, just to see like how this box that I'm thinking outside, there's still a box that you have to think outside. How elastic is it? How can we, can we expand it? You know, can we? What, what, how big is it? Because it's been proven that it's kind of unclear. Um, to the great dismay of, of of some more conservative hard rock puritans, but um, I think that that's the way to go. That's all my heroes have always pushed the envelope um, in some way or form. Even you know the teenage death metal high school people that made really cool records, but some way or form they were thinking outside the box and they were thinking in a different way. And, and I think that that's one, one of the problems within metal. It's, it's been, it's, you know, it's, it, just because it has been around for such a long time and, and, and it's, there's cl clear rules now and clear, clear traditions and, and all those things that the reason why this genre is here from the first the first reason for it is just to break those, but it's 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 just that's just the nature of the beast. I think it's just the nature of things uh, existing for longer than a minute. All of a sudden, there there will always be in the sort of embracing factor and and something that sort of stabilizes into a dogma and um, a lot of isms. We hear that Papa Four is on his way. Uh, so I have two questions about that. Uh, with all the three other Papas being dead, do you think the Cardinal has any idea of his potential impending doom? And uh, how far have you thought into the future for, for Papa for whoever he may be? Um, as to the Cardinal's wits, I, um, I don't know. There are a lot of exalted people who are not as smart as they appear or want to appear. It's almost like the, the smarter you say you, yourself that you are, the dumber you are. Um, so I don't really know. I mean, he seems to be pretty full of himself, but if, if he's aware of the unavoidable... Uh, 
I, I don't know. How far I, I have looked into the future. Uh, it's, um, it's hard to, to say because it's like if from, there, there's one practical aspect of everything and then there's this storyline. And they go in tandem a little. They, they change as, as uh, the setting change. Um, right now I am very clear with what, I've, you know, what, what I'm supposed to do next year and the next album cycle. So I know pretty well what we're doing up until 2022. Um, practically, um, it, it's a little bit more uh, firm because you know we're leaving this album cycle uh, on a on a on a quite high note just because we've managed to sort of get into the arenas. We're doing full production shows, um, and we intend to start doing that next album cycle. So it's, for me, um, I think that we've sort of uh, now gotten the key to where we're supposed to be in terms of production and autonomy and all that. Um, so for me, the, the most important thing is just to, to build a strategy and, and a schedule where we can do that all over the place as smooth and, and, and effectively as possible. Uh, you know, with the without segregating people or or under under delivering here and there um, might sound vague, but yeah, there's so there's a lot of practicalities that that goes into planning the future. Um, but then again, if if let's say that for some reason next album tanks or we're just like not in demand anymore, and things sort of go sideways, um, that will of course. Uh, affect my planning as well. So you cannot, you can have a vision, you can have a goal, uh, but you should pack that vision with many, many, many ideas. And you have to think a little bit like a general. You don't know what happens. If I bomb that fortress, You know, there are certain things that might happen, but I have to be aware that there might be something that I have no idea about. So I have to have another plan because if there is a big ass flying saucer coming out of, I don't know, I have to be prepared to sort of shoot it down. And you have to be like that in, in, when it comes to anything, your restaurant, your, your, uh, tile company or, or you, you have to be sort of flexible but if we get to do that I have a lot of plans for that yeah you know there's a, there's a string of things that we can do but we're still we're still working off of crossing out things that I've had on the idea on the idea sheet for even longer than Ghost have been around a lot of the stage ideas that we're doing now and a lot of the staging ideas that we're incorporating onto the next production is things that I came up with 20 years ago. So it's it's just, <laughs> for me, it's sort of endless. I, I, I can do this forever because uh, I, can, I can do it for other bands, you know, I, because I have so many fun little things that we, we can do. Um, so I'm just trying to do as many of them as I can before it's over.